All right, what is up, everybody? Welcome to Telmo's World Episode Zero. This is our pilot episode. I am Telmo, and joining me for tonight's episode is none other than Dave Cantrell, aka Scamp. Did I say that right? Yeah. Cantrell? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, so a lot of people may know him as the Dave behind Dave Stupid Rule. And if you're in the Smash community, you or the competitive community, you've definitely heard of Dave Stupid Rule. How are you doing, Dave? I'm doing all right. Yeah, it's been you know the last couple of years have been rough, but um, <laughs> hanging in there. You know, I feel like staying sane in these times is an accomplishment. Yeah, and I'm doing that all right. <laughs> nice. Yeah, why don't why, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, I mean, you and I have been friends for a while now, but yeah, tell yeah. tell the people at home like you know who who are you? Oh well, I'm a scamp. I like yeah. that's my gamer tag for that. I'm a not a professional gamer. I'm a, a professional board gamer. I don't get paid for that. Whatever. <laughs> I'm a gaming enthusiast, so to speak. Yeah. That's pretty much it. I'm just I've been around in a lot of communities, uh, fighting game, um, Smash, uh, and board gaming. Um, yeah, that's more or less it. I, I and you know it's funny because when I was coming up with people to talk to for for this idea, this podcast, mm -hmm. uh, I think you were top of mind because I feel like you t you're you're in a lot of communities um, mm -hmm. in a lot of different capacities, uh, and what I think what people want out of this is they want to know I want people to know more about you as a person outside of you know all the things that you do for the community but let's talk a little bit about you and the community sure so everyone knows Dave stupid rule uh, why don't you actually explain this what, what is oh, Dave's the rule, rule? Itself? yeah yeah the rule yeah itself. so the rule is well usually uh, you cannot counterfeit these uh, the last stage that you won on yeah unless both players agree this prevents you from basically doubling down on your best stage um, if yeah. you've already won on it. So if you have been to a tournament, you've probably read over the rules at some point. And in there, there's actually something called Dave's Stupid Rule. I think some places have called it the Stage Clause. Uh, stage Clause, um, CSR Modified. Yeah. Um, just no name. <laughs> yeah. Just the rule, yeah. Which is how it probably should have been, but... We'll probably get into that. Yeah. And so this was in like, what, 2004? Why don't you tell the story about how Dave Stupid Rule came about? Oh, sure. No problem. So yeah, it was around 2004. I can't remember exactly when. So first you need to uh, go back to Tournament Go. This is a series um, run by Matt Deasy. This yeah. is a really old school Melee series. Um, the first of its kind. First uh, international or first regional NorCal SoCal. Really first um, it, like international with someone from another, like out of the U.S., yeah. And then first, like, East Coast, West Coast real thing where, you know, both coasts really converged into one tournament. And, um, yeah, so the one in particular, TG4, the fourth one, that was the first one where we saw uh, Ken, the King of Smash. Um, and at that tournament, he, like, I watched a lot of his games. And I noticed that, oh, and for more context, uh, you have to know that all stages but two were legal. And... Um, well, yeah, that's all you need to know. So when you started off a match, you either had to agree with your opponent uh, on a stage or you just pick random. Mm -hmm. So for the most part, people either agreed to FD, the most popular stage, or um, just went to random if they couldn't do that. And what I noticed is uh, when watching Ken play that he would, if he went to random, then, uh, and he won, then after a game two, if he lost that, he would just counterfeit back to the first stage he won on, knowing that he did so well there, he's just going to do it again. And I saw this and I was thinking, well, there's a lot of broken character stage combos and other things like that. So what if you're playing and you random, like, your worst stage ever, your worst stage ever, okay. right? You're just going to get destroyed for game one, play game two. If you win that, your opponent will be like, hey, he was really, really bad on that first stage. Let's just take him right back there. <laughs> what was... What was the strangest, like, example? I guess, what was the most egregious example of, of somebody, like... Ice School Mountain. <laughs> Ice School Mountain and which yeah. character? Um, well, Falco. That was my brother's pick. Okay. Like, that's, where he took, that's where he beat Ken, actually. Really? So, so what was the strat? Um, I don't know. Just take Ken to some goofy stage because you can't <laughs> beat him on a normal stage. Uh, no, the one in particular certainly was... Um, he played my brother on Big Blue, which my brother was incredibly bad at. He's Falco. And then um, my brother took on Ice Cold Mountain. This is competitive Smash by the way, back in 2004. <laughs> and then Ken just went right back to Big Blue. And I've seen him kind of pick other stages before, um, especially FD. He loved FD. Um, and yeah. he wouldn't if you're Martha at the time. Um, but yeah, 
So I saw that and I'm like, okay. Um, I talked to Matt Dietzy because we were friends and he yeah. ran a bi-weekly, like a kind of a local bi-weekly. Not local as you think, but now it's like a local tournament, but like local as for friends, like maybe eight people. And like actually then, local, like yeah. people from your neighborhood, basically. Yeah, basically. And so um, I told him, hey, we should use this rule. It's, uh, you know, the rule I just said. Yeah. And then in the forums, Matt's just like, all right, whatever. From now on, we're just going to use Dave's stupid rule. You know, he was just ribbing me, you know. He was just, yeah. And then he just kept it. He's like, he just added Dave's stupid rule into the rule set, and and that was that. Normally, when you make a rule, you just add it to the rule set. You don't name it. You don't like, yeah. You know, put it, its own separate line, just you know. But he, you know, just to make fun of me, he just put that in there. And yeah. then at TG five, so on. Uh, the rest of history. It was it was there. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much how it came about. Um, where it really solidified was after TG, because TG kind of set like a community standard. Yeah. Uh, a lot of events um, after TG, uh, MLG, uh, V Games, like I think, oh, I don't know about FC. Um, I'm not sure if they copy paste it or not, but it was, I think it was there. Anyway, um, they would all take, just copy paste the rule set, maybe make a few changes. Yeah. Some of them even changed Dave's stupid rule. It was something else, um, but they still called it that. So it just kept going and going. Um, and yeah, that's how it came about. So that's got to be the source of why so many people think that Dave's stupid rule is actually what you would consider NDSR. Well, I mean, it's like I have no agency over the rule. Like I don't. Sure, you know, but you're the one that you're the one that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. But like, imagine if I like charge royalties for it or something. It's like oh, <laughs> you gotta have you gotta pay up if you want DSR here. <laughs> and, and all that money that TOs made. No, right? Yeah. You thought you thought Nintendo canceled Big House? No, no, no. They didn't want DSR, and I shut it down. Just... <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's that's how much of an impact you've had on the scene, really. Kind of. Which is crazy. Like, um, that's well, that's another I, reason. I'm not impactful enough to shut down a tournament. Oh uh, but... no, obviously not. No, that's that's just that that was a joke. But okay. Like like I like I said, if you play competitive Smash, odds are you've heard of this rule. You've heard of Dave Super. Oh Dave. yeah, and it's actually been around in some other communities too. Like uh, oh, I, know yeah. they, I knew I know they used it in competitive Catherine. Um, really? Yeah. So enlighten me. What is what is competitive Catherine like stage wise? Are there different um, like? Set yeah. puzzles. Yeah, basically, there's different okay. uh, stages. Then they've uh, usually they have a different gimmick to them. Like one is exploding box. One is little warp. Uh, oh, I see. I see. kill you. Okay. And then some of the stages are banned. Um, but of the competitive stages, yeah. Then there's a DSR. If you won on, let's say, Fandango, you can't counterpick it unless um, unless your opponent's like, all right. <laughs> oh, that's that's really interesting. I didn't know that actually before this interview, and we've talked about it quite a lot. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I didn't I didn't know that it extended to other communities like that. Yeah, no, I've even had heard um, there's been commentary where people are like, "Who the hell is Dave?" And I'm like, there. <laughs> "I'm like there." I'm just like, yeah. Yeah, "Right on, this is awesome." Yeah, it's like it's just, the camera just like pans straight to you. It's like that's Dave. Oh, that would be even more interesting. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just nearby. It's like, eh. yeah. yeah. I kind of like being like in the. Um, Kind of the background. I don't really like to be front and center. That's why I keep telling people, or I used to tell people it was DA Dave, because he was, you know, <laughs> Dave's stupid rule. Who else could it be? The guy's name is Dave. Come on now. <laughs> well, it's ironic that you, you, you say that, and yet here you are, front and center in an interview. Eh, yeah. Maybe it's time. That also, it's, yeah, also, that's, that's one reason I thought you'd be such an interesting pick, is because, or an interesting person to interview, is because the community really doesn't know <laughs> what you look like, really. Oh, well, that's true. I remember... Um, Shout out to Austin Melee. Austin Melee did a um, a piece on Dave Super Roll a little bit. It was ten like most iconic phrases in Smash. Yeah. So if yeah, check out that channel if you haven't. It's really good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're they're actually kind of the only people to ever reach out and question me about it, like interview me about it on um, or you know ask about the yeah. thing. Did like, they just like uh, call you on Discord or did you like, a, fly you out or something? No, no, no. It's just a Facebook Messenger oh, okay. interview. But. But yeah, no, uh, and even in the clip, I watched, I watched the video, yeah, there's no pictures of me. Yeah. So, eh, whatever. Like I, remember, I said, I like, I like being in the background, I don't mind. I think I remember when you, uh, when that video came out, you told us about it, like, mm -hmm. everyone, oh, in, everyone in the group yeah. chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, hey, who's that, who else has been number one in a top <laughs> 10 Melee video? Not you, probably. That's pretty cool, <laughs> like, honestly. It really was, that's yeah. why That's why I gave, uh, gave them a shout out earlier. All right, so, on top of Dave, stupid rule. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of your biggest contributions to the community is that you are a TO. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. You, you TO a lot of tournaments. I think 
the two biggest tournaments that you're known for are Evo and Genesis. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't we talk a little bit about that, actually? How did you end up as a TO for... I guess, okay, let, let, let's, let's back up a little bit. How did you get into tournament organizing in the first place? Well, yeah, um, you'd have to go back like a while. So Tournament yeah. Go, again, um, the reason... I just kind of fell into it because at that time, I had experience running tournaments for like uh, Street Fighter, Guilty Gear, like mm. the whole FGC scene. I would um, run local tournaments at a local arcade. Um, even in major, I'd run a pool maybe, or you know, okay. a lot of lot, some of the people knew me, so they knew I could be trusted with the bracket. Yeah. Um, and so, but that's how a lot of things started. Um, people don't understand like a lot of, or maybe they do, but for those of you who don't know, a lot of the early melee came about, or the structure came about because of other FGC in place. So for, and even some jargon. So for example, the reason it's called wave dashing is because it looks a lot like the wave dashing Tekken. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know that if that weren't the case, uh, the community would have come up with their own name, something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it looks just like wave dashing Tekken and the people around like Matt, Matt DZ again, played a lot of Tekken, um, the group there. So they knew about it and thus they were able to get it, um, that jargon in, um, <clears throat> But yeah, essentially, I had all this experience, so when Matt's running these tournaments, um, I would be the one, probably the main one, to run the brackets, especially because, you know, everyone was playing at the time. Yeah. Um, I would also maybe draw the brackets by hand. Oh, yeah, this is like way before, oh, yeah, before like you could Challenge or Smash, oh, yeah. even before you could print out brackets. Right, exactly. Yeah. Oh, that was fun. You ever drawn a... Was it 128 man bracket by hand? No, on a giant roll of paper. Can you imagine getting the seating oh. wrong for that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, what was the, what was the first tournament it you ever hosted? The seating back then, especially because it was like the first time uh -huh. that East Coast and West Coast really met. It was more just like, I mean, we kind of had like sort of seating. Everyone we knew we knew our local region, but like out of state, like who the hell knew? Um, it was mostly seating at the time was mostly just separating by region. Which is like making sure regions didn't play each other. Yeah, at least okay. not right away. Losers bracket all bets are off you can't really plan for that mm -hmm. but yeah we separate people by region and then you had a good tournament for the most okay. part yeah that, that's really interesting because like we have it so good nowadays <laughs> auto seeders like us uh, smashy g in general has just like elevated the game for tournament organizers and that's yeah. not a plug i swear um, so but i, I do kind of want to correct you a little bit of what you said earlier the uh um, oh, yeah? i was i was a to at um or one of the to's at genesis one and two but after that, um, I haven't been really a TO at Genesis in any capacity. I've just been kind of like on consult, I guess. I didn't really have an official title, but I will walk into the TO area and, yeah. uh, and help out. I've solved the number of disputes just by kind of <laughs> going around and, and acting like, a, like authority. I think, that was one of, I, I think that was actually one of my first impressions of you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, it probably, was just I, like, I assumed you were a TO because you were sitting at the TO desk. Yeah, I probably was. You know, I, I know how to run a tournament, and I know how to pe help people out. Yeah. So, you know, I just do that because I'm not going to just sit there and not. <laughs> so what was the what was the first tournament you ever actually organized? Um, no, I haven't I haven't organized like a major Smash tournament. I mean, like in general, in general. Yeah, um, just locals. I've never I haven't done things past locals. I've worked with people for yeah. like majors and stuff um, and especially like Evo. But as far as like a like my, something to put my own name on, not really. I haven't really done that. Really? Um, yeah. Like I said, I prefer to be more in the helping capacity rather than just like the front and center or like the the main guy, as so to speak. Yeah. So like, and that's kind of how Evo worked. Um, yeah. Before Evo, I volunteered like almost every year, or at least every year I went. So I'd I run, run a few pools. One of my pride and joys, or at least proudest achievements, was um, 2009. I believe it was 2009, 2010. I'm pretty sure it's 2009. Oh, no, 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 no. It was 2010. 2009 was the first year that Street Fighter 4 came, and that started like a huge boom in attendance. And then 2010, I ran a 128-man pool um, by myself. We were supposed to have... Pool? Yeah, pool. Just a pool? Just a pool. Yeah, at the time, that, oh, Street Fighter 4 blew up like you wouldn't believe. Almost, I, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. So, um, yeah, but there was 120-man pools. And then um, each pool is supposed to have two TOs. Um, and, you know, and for the most part, it worked very well. But my TO, the, or I ran two of these things. One of them I ran with a, a player named Hung B, who, if you know Third Strike, is an incredible aura from SoCal. Mm -hmm. Great guy. So, well, I don't really know him, but he was a great guy. <laughs> he was a great person to work with. And then um, the second one, the person I was supposed to work with didn't show up. So I just ran it by myself. And That's crazy. And it went smoother than, like, people were... 
I was reading comments in forums afterwards. It's like, yeah, it was, this pool next to me had just one guy running it, and then went way better than this pool that had three people running it. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's you. But anyway, um, so I volunteered every year. I actually knew I knew the staff, the cannons, Mr. Wizard, all them, or I don't know if it's really active now, whatever. Um, but um, then it was 2011, I think. Um, I was volunteering, and as volunteering, there's like several games, and you know, people are just taking the pools and running different pools. And I'm like, oh, how about I just uh, take these brackets and I just organize this and hand them out? And so I was, I was at the TO desk <laughs> organizing, handing out the pools and, you know, signing everyone and getting things organized. And then um, the next year, there was like, hey, there's a paid position for Ebro now. And it was exactly what I did the year before. Nice. So then I applied. I'm like, hey, this is exactly what I did the year before. I'm not sure why I got the job. I was very sarcastic. <laughs> but I think they, they knew that I would ap apply for that, yeah. especially because I volunteered every year. And so that was my start of uh, TOing for, um, for Evo. So, yeah. so like you, you are, you're an official employee. No, it's more like a contract. I mean, I guess technically I am under NDA um, and stuff. And yeah. I do, so I guess kind of. I guess but for all intents and purposes. Yeah, I guess. I mean... But it's a little weird. But I, I, would, I consider myself more of like a contracted or a contractor. What a would contract, you cons contracted employee, I guess. You what would it. you consider like not a contracted employee? Like, for, like what would you salary, right? Like salary. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, well, could, I guess for the event. If they ever wanted to, they could just be like, nah, and just not take me on a year. Is it inaccurate to say that you work for Evo? It's not inaccurate. I put it on my taxes every year, so <laughs> <laughs> why not? That's actually a pretty cool thing to have, uh, like, to I guess do taxes for as far as jobs. I'm like, yeah. Oh yeah. I got to file taxes because of the money I made from Evo, which is not something not a lot of people can say. That's true. Yeah. So, well, eh, you say, ah, the ten o ten o production, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I guess yeah, compared to the whole world, not that many people can say it. Yeah. So uh, on the topic of Evo, uh, what's what's one of your like favorite Evo stories? Hmm. Or moments. I know we all know a lot of Evo moments. Obviously, there's it's been around forever. But oh yeah, well, yeah. What about let's let's talk about like yeah, <laughs> Evo moment thirty seven is exactly Funny, what almost, I was that's one of the Evos I didn't. I've missed like two Evos. I think mm -hmm. overall, I miss. I know I missed Brawl, the one where Brawl was there, and I missed the one where Evo moment thirty seven was. <laughs> so okay, but all the so other ones I think I've been there. What was what, what was the first Evo you attended? Uh, attended two thousand one. 2002, sorry. I think it's the first one. That was the first one, yeah. It was at UCLA. It's just kind of random. Um, yeah. I heard about it. It just ha so happened my family was vacationing in LA to see some relatives. Yeah. And I was like, oh, hey, let's, uh, can, I, can you drop me off here? And my parents did. And uh, was that Evo <laughs> <laughs> for like half a day, yeah. And so it was at UCLA. Was it inside like an auditorium or was yeah, it? Yeah, it was in a big room. Um, it's hard to remember exactly. But yeah, there was just like one big room. I don't know what it's used for normally. Yeah. It felt like an, either an auditorium or cafeteria like rec room. I don't know. It was, yeah. It's small. It's small by today's standards. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but yeah, like mem memory, it's, it's weird because memory, I'm like, memory is like, this is the biggest room I've ever seen. But if I go back there, it's probably just like the size of a, 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 a lecture classroom or something. <laughs> like compared to this room, how big mm -hmm. do you think it was? Well, I guess you have to pan with the cameras around. But yeah. yeah. I'd say probably about twice as big as this room. Okay. If, that's a pretty big size. And that's I'm guessing. But it felt yeah. like, I don't know, 10 times this room. Yeah. And this was all, this was before consoles were really a thing for these. Oh, terms. right. So it was uh, all. It was all arcade. Yeah, it was all cabs. Right. Which is insane <laughs> to think about. Like, logistically, I, I feel like I would have an aneurysm trying to organize that oh, in particular. Funny, funny story, I guess. Uh, first year of Evo, um, the grand finals had to be best of one. Because uh, oh, they, yeah. they were getting kicked out, yeah. Yeah. Oh <laughs> so, man. And it was, yeah. So it's, it's funny to think of now. <laughs> <laughs> like imagine an Evo Best of One Grand Finals in 2021. Exactly. Yeah. But be you so know, that, they had to do what they had to do at that time. Yeah. I remember it was uh, Justin Wong. Uh, it was Marvel. Justin Wong versus um, Rotron. I don't, I don't even know who that is. Uh, he was a player from Washington. Okay. And uh, yeah, had, it was Best of One. <laughs> Is that did Justin Wong win that? Yeah, he did. Oh, okay. He actually lost the. He was in winners. He lost the first game, so I guess it got reset. So, still, so <laughs> even though it was best of one, it was still uh, double elimination. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's you can't mess the format. <laughs> you can just turn it to best of one. I mean, if you're getting kicked out, you're getting kicked out. Yeah. I've definitely yeah. been there. Before. That dude. And yeah. oh man, oh, uh, I believe a projector was stolen. So. Oh my God. Yeah, it was. Um, there were some times back then. 
But, um, but yeah, that was the start of it all. Uh, okay, uh, so... Oh, you have any Nintendo stories? Nintendo stories? Like, specifically regarding Evo. Because oh. I know that the, the, oh, history, yeah. the like, history of Smash at Evo has been really kind of convoluted. Yeah, more so than people realize, probably. Yeah, I mean, and so, I, you're like, you have, you have the inside scoop. Kind of. I don't, like, way back when. So Melee was in 2007. Mm. And for those of you who don't know, I was actually the commentator for most of that. You well, were? That was hard. Yeah, the guy, like, if you watch all the clips, the guy just yelling over the loud, the, the, all the commentator, commentary was back then was just a live mic <laughs> to the whole arena. Yeah. So, yeah, that was tough. This is back before commentary was established, so I was just, like, they told me to say, just to just say what's going on at all times, and that's much easier to do in tech than Smash. <laughs> <laughs> So but that's what I was trying to do. Anyway, that's a, that's a whole other story. But um, yeah, so to the, but it, they actually wanted Evo, uh, Melee at Evo in 2006. And, oh, really? Yeah. And um, from what I understand, now this is all, I don't know for sure. I wasn't, I was, I wasn't on staff, but this is what I've heard. Um, basically, uh, the, the runners of Evo were like, uh, hey, Nintendo, we're using your game Evo for, uh, for Evo. And then their legal department was just like, okay, give us $10,000. <laughs> and then they're like, uh, no, like, you don't understand. We're promoting your game, which is like, they're like, no, $10,000, or you can't make money off our game. <laughs> it's, it's, that's what I've heard. So I don't know the oh, full weird. details. Maybe it's more money, less money. I don't know for sure. But this is like in 2006. And that's why Eve, it wasn't there that year. Um, and so <laughs> Nintendo's legal department just, even back then, just pretty much doesn't have a clue. Um, or didn't. So, am I going to get in trouble from Nintendo from this? I mean, you don't work for Nintendo. That's so. true, I don't, but... Are you, I mean, <laughs> you're also not violating any NDAs, right? Not, I uh, didn't sign one with them, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So, anyway, um, yeah, so I wonder when Nintendo, like, all these times they shut down tournaments and <laughs> or just sue a little kid for a mod in Mexico, how much is just due to gross incompetence or really uh, male uh, malevolence? Like they're one of the most protective of their IPs, and it sure. makes I guess it makes sense. But so so money prevented Evo from having Smash at least a year earlier. I guess. I mean, it's not like they were going to pay that. So what it's happened? Just really, uh, oh no, they just had it next year, I guess. Well, yeah, but what? So did they did they pay Nintendo? Oh, almost certainly not. <laughs> I don't. Obviously, I don't know, but yeah. there's almost no way they paid Nintendo, especially that amount. Yeah, because back in that time, back then, ten thousand dollars was a lot of money. Oh yeah, it's still a it's lot, still of, a money. lot <laughs> of money. Yeah, I'm not, I wouldn't pay ten thousand dollars to for an IP for a tournament. It's just yeah, pretty, that's ridiculous. So, but I think it was just I don't know. I, the legal department had just had no idea what was going on, and they really don't want to listen. They just were like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> just put a lot of money on it. The problem goes away. So how do you feel about RTS? Uh, they, I think a lot of people know them right now as the company that Pokimane is a, a part of. Oh, yeah, because she announced it. On yeah, Tuesday. and it's like, yeah. like they're, they co-own Evo now. How do you feel about that? I'm, I'm fine with it. I mean, it's, it's RTS and Sony, right? Yeah. Um, honestly, I don't even know what RTS does. Uh, so. Honestly, I kind of don't either. I, I have an idea, but yeah, and I see like Pokemon is like tweeting stuff about like free MVP. Free MVP too. That's, that's that's a lot of fun, but I don't really know how much influence she has. So um, yeah, honestly, I don't really have much of an opinion of it. Um, as long as they don't try to basically change Evo to like you know only Sony or only like or whatever, yeah, like make it ridiculous, then. I'm fine with it. Um, I, I I doubt that's gonna happen. I doubt yeah, anything I have, bad is gonna happen, really. I have no idea. I hope not. Yeah, but we'll see. All right. So I guess this is a question that a lot of people are wondering: What do you think the future of melee is gonna be like at Evo? Oh, at Evo? Well, yeah. currently it's it's basically nothing. But yeah, uh, I think. Well, I sh I should mention like before I answer the question or go into the question, like I have no, I don't, I'm not involved with selecting games or I don't even consult on. Who chooses what? That'd be so much power. That would. <laughs> or, meh. Yeah, some, I mean, someone has that power. Someone yeah. chooses. But, like, um, so I'm not involved with that process at all. Anything I say here is not, like, any inside scoop on Evo or the opinion of Evo. It's just uh, just for me. Okay. So, but I think um, I think it's possible for Melee to get back into Evo. Um, a couple things need to happen, though. First, I feel like, like, a lot of, or not a lot, but some of the more vocal people in the community need to want it back at Evo. Yeah. Other, other than just Hungrybox. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what their opinion is of that part. 
And two, I feel like a big thing would be if they, if the standard for melee would be on um, HD monitors or just monitors, the same that uh, Street Fighter uses, other things yeah. like that. Oh, CRTs. That was, yeah, not no non CRTs. No, I mean like that's that's the that's the. Well, I know CRTs are standard, right? But yeah. like, if if there was a way to have a consistent tournament on um, easily set up on just monitors, mm -hmm. then that would that would be huge because then. Um, Evo could turn over the stations when they needed to for other games, and uh, I mean, honestly, just talk to gaming generations and see what they think about CRTs. Yeah. Um, just setup and just convenience is just so much better. With um, it's so it's so hard to have CRTs just for one game when there's eight other games or whatever, and uh, yeah, you just take up a whole second. Which is funny, like it's a it's a testament because you've seen it all at this mm -hmm. point. You saw. It started with arcade cabinets, and then eventually console tournaments came around, and those had CRTs. Oh, yeah. And now uh -huh. you're in this era, which is just all widescreen, lightweight monitors, HD, yeah. and all oh, that. Yeah, much better now, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I don't, I don't know if you know how, how much people, how big the backlash was against console tournaments back in the day. I don't. It was all arcade. Um, like... Well, I don't know. I guess opinions vary. There's some people split. Yeah. But I don't know how many times uh, Mr. Wizard, who was running at the time, would just there'd just be arguments in in forums, just going on and on. Mr. Wizard would just pop in and just be like, "Evo is a console tournament," and that's literally all he would say. And that's like that's really what you needed. But people just like and just they just don't didn't like it, didn't want it. Like, Evo is a console tournament. Like, hey, Evo, why don't you do this, 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 and this? Like super guns with the console, and you have. Evil is a console. <laughs> like, keep talking. That's that's it. Um, yeah, except except for maybe uh, CBS two. There was just um, especially especially places with arcades as their culture. Like they needed the arcade all the time and yeah. play with the people. You know, they just they just hated uh, Dreamcast. So where did you stand on that? Oh, I was fine with it. <laughs> it was um, it's around that time where it was just sort of like I think the benefits of consoles um, outweighed the negatives. Um, especially with CBS too, yeah. and um, there was a there's a old school player named Bucktooth, who uh, posted a, a thing I didn't know about CBS two was that there was no universal speed for CBS two arcade. If you had two arcades with the same game, then the speed might be a little different. Why? Uh, why is that? I don't know that. That's a okay. technical thing I don't know. But it's like, yeah, if you have it on console, like it's a universal speed. Anyone could play it anywhere. Yeah. And, and and come to Evo and it'd be like your speed won't be throwing off. And when you have stuff like roll canceling and really precise timing, like it's very important. Yeah. So and that was that. But um, yeah, no, it was. I mean, I grew up in the arcade culture, but um, one of the main things about the console is that you're responsible for your own controller, which is mm -hmm. a huge thing. Um, biggest yeah. problem with arcade cabinets would, no matter how big the tournament is or how much you take care of them. They will break in the middle of a of a game. Oh, man. Do you have any stories about that? Not really. I don't know. Oh, I guess. I mean, I don't have any personal stories about it. But I've definitely known some incidents that happened. There was a rule in Evo um, specifically for a cabinet breaking in the middle of a set, mm. and it was because uh, I believe it was a player named Vissant who lost the game. It was him and someone else. I can't remember who he was playing against. But he, he lost the game to, um, to somebody. Then the next people came on and were like, hey, this controller's broken. And Vissant just thought he was messing up, you know, in the middle of the match. Yeah. So they had to replay the match and they, made, and they put that rule in the set. But you can just imagine the kind of problems that will happen with uh, arcade cabinets. Oh, man. Because they're huge, you know, you got to bring them in. Um, they're not that cheap. <laughs> it's much easier to have just a bunch of TVs and consoles. But there were some growing pains um, for sure. Especially with the people that just kept complaining about the uh, consoles. So if you, like, I imagine that must have been such a headache. If you were at a tournament and a console, not a console, uh, an arcade cabinet broke, you'd have to have a, a, an arcade tech on hand in probably order you just to shut it. it. you probably just shut it yeah. down and have one less cabinet for the whole tournament. Yeah. Uh, this is, I mean, this is way back in the day before, um, like, the biggest tournament would be around 250 people. And that was like major. Uh, most yeah. times would be around 100 or less. Um, yeah, the biggest tournament um, before before um, the Spirit Bomb and before uh, Melee got in, 
and before Street Fighter 4, because um, Street Fighter 4 went up to 2000 uh, pretty quickly. I think the first year was like, it's kind of similar to Melee, right? It was like the first year was like 800 or so, yeah. like 900, which is like, whoa. And then the next year was like 2000, something like that, maybe 1600. I can't remember the exact numbers. It's probably on Wikipedia somewhere. But um, yeah, before that, the biggest tournament was Match Melee 2007, um, over 400 people. Which is oh, like man. rookie I'm, numbers nowadays. Yeah. No, that's still a big that's still a big deal. Yeah. Like I think if you have four hundred people at a tournament, that's that's still even good even for well, it wouldn't be good for Genesis, but it'd still be respectable. Yeah. And that's two thousand seven in a in a in an Evo. Like, oh man, where people are like playing <laughs> there's a very vocal minority of people that just are just hating on Smash the whole time. <laughs> but that was that was a rough year actually. I helped uh TO that year before commenting the top eight and um because there was like 400 people, yeah. it was actually a it was, it was it was a best of one format, the entire tournament. Well, until top eight, it was supposed to be. Yeah. Um, I was I ran the top 96 or so, whatever, and I was sneak I was trying to sneak in uh, best of three as much as I could, and it turns out they knew about it the whole time. <laughs> the uh, you know the, the cannons and people like working. Oh, okay. But so they they, they knew I was sneaking in. Um, but how do you sneak it in? You just you just say, hey, it's best of three. And you, don't, and you don't tell you don't tell you don't tell the other people. So um, yeah, but I guess they knew the whole time. But I I finished 15 minutes over time. It was more or less, which was amazing for melee at the time. However, I do have to. <laughs> that did lead to some interesting moments. That was when uh, Mango beat uh, Mewtwo King in like in the bracket. That was a huge deal. But that was the yeah. best of one. Yeah. And then also yeah also. Um, I think Chillin beat Manga or Chillin beat Mewtwo King to get into top eight losers. Can't remember if that was um, that's the one or not. I'm sure Chillin could tell you. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll get. Maybe if this gets big enough, we'll get him on the show. I think that, was, that year was Hugo's uh, best chance to win a major, I believe. Oh no. Yeah, it was close. He was in winners against Ken coming from losers. That was also the first appearance of Mango. Um, he got third. Obviously, he beat Mewtwo King. That put yeah. his name on the map for. Oh well. I guess you know the rest. I think most people do. <laughs> so, you know, you mentioned actually a lot of people having backlash or a lot of backlash behind Melee's inclusion at Evo. And you've been a part of both the Smash community, which I guess is a different community from the fighting game community at large. And you've been like that the whole time. I mean, I consider it the same thing, but people do distinguish it when yeah. they say FGC. Um, just kind of, yeah, because Smash kind of is its own thing, especially when the you have CRTs and you have to kind of be in its own section. Yeah. I know Jabalian CEO often had just the Smash room and then the other, which didn't help. Everything us else. Much, but yeah. it was kind of nice because there isn't usually a ton of crossover. However, I, like, I think with like the younger generation, if you want someone to like to, to beat you at like Smash and at Guilty Gear and at like Dragon Ball, uh, I'll introduce you to a man named Jonathan Tanay, a uh, NorCal local legend. Well, he's very young, but... He's insanely good. So up and coming talent, I feel like crosses over a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if like MK Leo or any of them play um, other fighting games. I feel like I feel like Leo at least plays some other fighting games. He's definitely tried DBs, D Dragon Ball Fighters. Well, if you want to get stereotypical, I bet he play King of King Fighters. Fighters. So oh, we'll no. see. Anyway, <laughs> enough of that. But um, yeah, um, I would I would say just in general. I mean, there's always been like. You, if you uh, talk to FGC people and you talk to like Smash people, there's always been a lot of butting heads and there's always been a lot of like just general hate. But in all honesty, from what I've experienced, it's always been a very vocal minority. Yeah. Um, even way back in the day, like this is why Melee was at Evo. Um, the you know a lot of the people in they may not play it profess or like go to tournaments or anything, but a lot of people in the FGC um, play other games. They like Smash. It's a fun yeah. game. You know, they'll adjust a one play Smash. I know, like a lot of people do. There's, but there's just a vocal minority. However, it's the same in other communities too. There's a vocal minority of people that just hate on Third Strike or hate on Alpha Three. Or there's a lot. Such a weird thing to hate on. <laughs> well, Alpha so. Three maybe maybe less so, but well, like, at the time. Well, now if you hate on it now, it's kind of weird. But yeah. like, <laughs> like Third, who who could hate Third Strike? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I did main Elena, so that annoyed a lot of people. Okay. But except for Yun players, they suck. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's always just gonna. I don't know. There's this, and, but you'll see it in like um, ultimate and melee. People just, you know, I think most people are chill. Like, hey, you don't play ultimate or you don't play melee, but you don't hate on it. But there are some people that do, and I don't know. Those people are should, weird. Yeah, those people just <laughs> need to get a life, really, <laughs> or need to get better friends to tell them, yeah. hey, well, stop that. So 
so like I like I mentioned previously, you've basically seen it all in terms of the esports landscape, and at least through the lens of the fighting game community. Mm. What's it been like the transition between those eras? I mean, there have been a lot of transitions for you. It's just I think the biggest transition are like sponsored players. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, certainly like way back, there's there no one played to like try to get sponsored and make money, right? Yeah. Or you know, that's that's a goal that's never been around. I think um, even like when Street Fighter Four came out, it was still a little rare. Um, mm. Like Daigo wasn't sponsored. Daigo sponsored now, of course, and a lot of all the top people are sponsored now. But like Justin signing to EG was pretty huge. Before yeah. that, he was with a group called Empire Arcadia. Ah, Boy. EMP. Yeah, uh, this, this will be a fun thing. Yeah, just like, I'll pull up, so I'll pull not... up the uh, thumbnail of that video. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 that's not real money. So the uh, <laughs> so he signed with EG, and that was like a big thing. It's like no one knew he could do that. And then of course, um, but there's been pitfalls too, like the whole yeah. Echo Fox saga. Um, that's unfortunate. Okito was signed to a group called the Traveling Circus. Oh man, I didn't was... know about that. Oh god, don't don't. <laughs> but um, in a similar vein, shout out to Broken Tier. Um, yeah, they're not really around anymore, but that was that was that was good times. Um, but yeah, yeah, the, the, just the explosion of uh, people. Like, um, I think people forget like everything starts with just a local ten man tournament, uh, right? In yeah. a garage, maybe even today, like a local ten man is still great. Um, Those are some of the best tournaments. Usually, yeah. I mean, I remember in in NorCal Smash, one of the best tournaments, one of the best locals was just run in some some warehouse mm. in Mountain View. Shout out to Six Rugs. Shout out to Six Rugs. <laughs> Missed that tournament. But there's been a lot of interesting uh, transitions. Um, I do kind of miss the days of arguing over the rules, like establishing the rule set back yeah. in the TG days. Um, I mean, TG also. one of the things that TG also established that people don't realize is Team Attack on. Um, ah. There used to be a big argument over which is better or which to use. Yeah. And I was always Team Attack on. Team Attack off sucks. But yeah. I th- a lot of people agree with you uh, now, but back then it was it was pretty pretty good split. But a lot of players, I think, went to TG, and those rule sets were solidified for other tournaments. That yeah, just stuck with T- uh, Team Attack on. Um, so yeah, there's been a lot of progression. But uh, really, oh and oh, um, round robin being a requirement at majors. Oh man, that used to be a thing. So pools were round robin at one point, point. Like, that was yeah, mandatory. Pool- no, I mean, I, obviously, no one's there's no governing body that forces yeah. you to do it. But yeah, pretty much, if you went to a major, um, 2006, 2008 or so, uh, you expected a round robin tournament, um, as long as it was you know big enough, obviously. Yeah. Um, I remember like um, Ship of Fools, the FC people ran tournaments that were round robin into round robin into round robin. <laughs> like they wanted to, they actually wanted to do the whole thing round robin, but they'd settle on a like a top eight bracket or whatever. I see. Um, yeah, those are the days. But nowadays, it's like. Nope, double nation. Get in, get out. <laughs> What's the weirdest tournament format you've ever seen? Oh, my own. I made uh, <laughs> locals. I tried a few. Um, I, triple elimination is always fun. That's not too weird. You can just imagine it. But yeah. it's it's. I think we've done it once or twice, and at least once. Uh, talking to Doctor Z about it, and then like, uh, did Shroom Shroomed either got triple eliminated or triple in, eliminated somebody? I can't remember which one it was. Uh, anyway, but that, obviously that's going to happen if you go triple elimination. <laughs> um, I tried to do like something called, called the drift tournament, where you started in three tiers, and then after each tier, the you had four rounds. Um, each round, the top two in the first tier would go on to the final bracket, yeah. then two from the second tier would advance to the top tier, and so on. Mm. And so the point was to have like, well, everyone plays at least eight games, and you'd be playing them all around your level, but. Um, Honestly, a Swiss format is just way better. Yeah, it's not, it, it sounds like you accidentally invented Swiss format. Oh, I knew about Swiss because I used okay. to play chess. Um, and oh, yeah. Yeah, the problem with Swiss, obviously, is just um, it's a great format and it's probably preferable to any other, but you need to have enough setups for everyone to play at the same time, or at least in two ways at the very least. And that's really the main problem. If you've got a 2,000-man tournament... Um, you don't have a thousand cents. <laughs> <laughs> Just you don't. Yeah. Online you might. Actually, Swiss that that was one of the big things. Swiss actually works great online because everyone has a setup. They're sitting in front of it. Yeah. Oh, that's a whole different conversation about why like online tournaments are so easy to run. As somebody yeah. that's run 
a lot of online tournaments. Well, I just had to run um, a bunch in for um, Evo twenty twenty one. Oh yeah, that's uh, right. Start with the summer. Yeah, that was interesting. Um, yeah, mod I modded um, three, four, four. I can't remember. I have to go back and check. The most interesting one was I did run one pool in um, the South America region, and I don't speak Spanish, um, <laughs> so we had to we used the translator. So I translated message, translate, boom, look at it. Okay, translate back. Did you guys use Smash UG for that? Yes. Okay, so this was like in that client. Yes. Oh, that was a lot of fun. It actually yeah. was. It was a unique experience. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'll say. I, I don't think I've. I don't think I know anybody with that experience. Well, I know at least uh, five people now. No, that, that, that's really interesting. You know, you you TO'd in a different language, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so, who do you think the most underrated person in like the FGC or Smash is? Hmm. Like, who is who is the most unsung hero in the, of the community? In your eyes. Yeah, that's a good question. I have to think about that for a bit. Um, I don't know. Like most most players, um, especially now nowadays, tend to get kind of get recognized. Yeah. Like I was um, I was trying to do like fantasy melee for a major tournament the other day, and it's so hard to pick like diamonds in the rough. Everyone is so well scouted. Like their yeah. their money value is so accurate. <laughs> Things like that. It's just so um, who, who would be really underrated? I think. Oh, oh, I know. Um, one person I don't think gets enough credit is, um, do you know a guy named M3D? No, no. Um, yeah, his name's Jason. The, um, he's the guy that was, I, I'm trying to remember his exact role, but like, he's, he's, he was the main guy for MLG. Like, he made the MLG series go. It's like the director of it? Yeah, or no, he, I mean, he ran the tournaments too. He's the okay. main, he's pretty much the main CEO, but he was also like the community liaison. I mean, he talked to a lot of top players, he would implement rules. He even uh, once, um, like gave a warning to Ken because Ken <laughs> uh, Ken faked a, a loss to shoot at. So what that, do you mean by fake? Okay, so they're in they're in winners finals. He yeah. faked he lost to shoot at, so he could go to losers, beat up Azin, and then him and shoot at would be top two. Well, so, well, what do you mean by fake? Like they would like throw for yeah he threw like just just throw like match fixing yeah basically okay <laughs> this is a long time ago yeah but I mean it's not something you can prove but um, you know. He, he knew, so he, I mean, he did that, and he like so he, he was the guy. We're on. I don't I don't know how much power he had, or I mean, he was at least head to and stuff. But yeah, mm. he, um, yeah, he got like ML, MLG going, you know, all all the, that's kind of like the dark ages of melees almost. Well, yeah, you say that, but really, MLG was the first. I, I think it's the first big entity to really take a chance on, on yeah. melee, and it, it was kind of like the advent of what we consider esports now. Yeah. So, um, yeah. It, uh, people owe a lot to him for that. Oh, wow. Really re laid the groundwork for like, you know, a a all kinds of um, tournaments in the future, yeah. potentially. So um, it's at Jason Thinks, I think is his Twitter. It's MP N3D. Okay. I'll pull uh, it up. Yeah, yeah. Give him, give him a follow. Yeah. Shout out to you. <laughs> are you friends? Are you friends with him personally? I've known him for, yeah, I've known him for okay. a very long time. Nice. Um, like, not like great friends, but uh, yeah, I've hung out with him before, like, like sporadically. Yeah. That's, I think that's that's actually so cool that you you've been around for so long that you are friends with people that are responsible for a lot of big decisions in the community. That's true. Good yeah. and bad, I guess. I guess people kind of knew me as the TO because of TG. Yeah. Um. So I would get just people would come ask me for advice or you know get yeah. my opinion on things occasionally. Yeah. So I think you mentioned earlier outside of Smash, you're just a general gamer. You mm -hmm. love games in general. Let's talk a even, little bit about it. I think even inside Smash, I'm just okay. a general gamer. I'm not you're really, general gamer. I haven't, I haven't been good at general the game. General gamer? Yeah. I, that should be my new tag, just to hide. <laughs> <laughs> that's your surf name. That's your new yeah, surf as name. far as, like, competitively, I haven't been good, at least in my opinion, for a very long time. Yeah. But, yeah, whatever. But, yeah, yeah. So, so outside, outside of, uh, I guess, fighting games, you know, I know that you're a pretty big board gamer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In fact, you actually uh, are an employee for a board game cafe, which is pretty right. cool. Well, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so where, where is it? Oh, it's in uh, Berkeley, California. It's yeah. called Victory Point Cafe. Come sit, stop by and say hi. Hopefully I'm working. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, um, I help prepare like food and stuff and also go around as um, what's known as a game guru. And I can help recommend and teach games. It's my favorite part of the job. If, uh, if I don't have, if, even if I'm on food and I don't have orders, I'll go around and just... Uh, and bother people. Do you have like a particular favorite game to teach players? Um, no, not really. It just 
the ones that are my favorite are my favorite to teach. Mm. Um, I particularly like people that are trying to transition from like the gateway games or like the more common games. So like Cards Against Humanity, maybe Ticket to Ride or Catan. Mm. Um, and they're trying like trying some new stuff. I like to try to maybe open the doors to like new possibilities. So basically, yeah. you're you're a board game drug dealer. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, first one's free. First one's free, then and you then gotta you get, get the good get, stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there is a big rabbit hole in board gaming. Um, if you own over 100 games and you haven't played half of them, you're a board gamer. <laughs> That's what it is. Oh, man, I'm I just even, sitting... Oh, yeah, yeah. I even bought a game right now. It's uh, just now. The uh, <laughs> I have no... I, I just... Break the it. code. I really like... I don't actually know anything about it. I just saw it. Um, yeah. Yellow is uh, a really good company. I really love deduction games. It's a Japanese designer. Um, really? felt like a no-brainer. Yeah, right there. That's cool. Um, here at the uh, here at the AFK Lounge. <laughs> <laughs> We're yeah, no, this, this place is uh, this place is AFK Lounge in San Jose, California. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they have another copy of that game. <laughs> Actually, I've never seen this before. Me so neither. This is really so, interesting. I really, but like I just said, I really like deduction games. Um, so take a chance on yeah. it. <laughs> All right. So at, at, outside of that, you're also pretty into sports. I think uh, we've had a lot of. I think you and I have had a lot of conversations off camera about sports. In fact, yeah. we had we had one last night. That's true. Yeah. So right. like, so how did how did you get involved with like watching sports? Did you, did you do a lot of sports growing up? Um, kind of. I mean, I did like little league. I didn't like little league, but I played. Yeah. I was pretty good at soccer, or football, where wherever you are, uh, <laughs> football maybe. Um, but really, uh, most of my interest in sports, I haven't watched a lot of sports recently. I do know a little bit. Yeah. But, like, I was a big fan, like, way back, um, like, around, like, the 90s, 2000s, uh, mostly because I played a lot of fantasy leagues. I feel like fantasy leagues really help you um, get into sports. You, I didn't know you were into fantasy. Well, oh, back what, then, yeah. yeah. I was thinking, well, yeah, you mentioned a fantasy league that um, maybe, like, off the record, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but um, I'm thinking about it, but I, I didn't go for that this year, but maybe in the future. But yeah, no, I mean, it kind of has the same mindset. It's the competitive mindset, but it's also like a lot of statistics, a lot of preparation. It blends well into TOing, um, just kind of naturally in a sense. Yeah. But my, my main sport these days that I watch is uh, soccer. I love the, yeah. the English Premier League mostly because I can't really watch the other leagues um, in the U.S. So yeah, I'm, big, I'm a big fan of soccer. Is you, who's, your, who's your team? Who's your favorite team? Oh, God. <laughs> you had to know this question was coming. Yeah, but it's just it's hard to say because like it's Arsenal. Arsenal. Arsenal's yeah. my favorite team for the stupidest reason. But then again, sports are dumb anyway. So, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So in round, uh, if you don't know, around 2002, um, when Thierry Henry was playing, yeah, uh, Arsenal used to have uniforms that said Dreamcast on them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh, I like the Dreamcast. Let's figure it out. Because I, I, I'm, I've never been to England. Well, I, I have. But at the time, I never, you know, I don't know any of these. I can't, I can't tell these teams apart. So, but yeah. hey, the Dreamcast team. Let's follow them. <laughs> so I've been an Arsenal fan since. Nice. So that's, that's Thierry Henry yeah. in, a, in a Dreamcast logo. So yeah. at the time, so you said like 2002, 2003. That's, I think I'm that's guess, like. I'm guessing. I can't remember. Like uh, the uh, Wikipedia will have when they had those uniforms. Yeah. But yeah. That's like one. That's around the time Marvel, Marvel Two was big. Yep. Yeah. So a lot of people were playing on Dreamcast back then. So is right. that why you had such a strong affiliation to that? Uh, I was never big. No, honestly. But <laughs> other games, Third Strike was really it was big on the Dreamcast. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, um, but the Dreamcast was just a really good system. There's a lot of really good games on it. Like yeah. Choo Choo Rocket, of course. Sonic Shuffle. You can't. Sonic, Sonic not, Shuffle. Sonic Shuffle. Sonic you can't Shuffle. not. Play Sonic Shuffle, <laughs> uh, Skies of Arcadia. I could go on. Power Stone. Yeah, Power Stone. And Hashtag Power Stone reboot too. Power Stone. Yes. Oh, why? Why not? Just even just. Oh, they did have a collection, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Power like, Stone Three, competitive Power Stone, would be amazing. Yes, I would love that. Right. Yeah. So, and then on the Dreamcast. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> oh man. All right. So my last question. Since you've been around for so long, I feel like this has been a theme. You've been around for a long time. You're yeah, old. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I'm sorry, but have you been a part of any moments? in the community like any any like big moments uh what what, um, what has it been like like obviously hype oh, moments man. are universal but have you been a part of any of them well let's see like me personally no there's there hasn't been like well i guess kind of although that wasn't that hype the um no i've been to a lot of places like um i've been at every genesis yeah. i've been at like every eva obviously so all, the, all those of course except uh, two 
Except for two. Yeah. But for Smash, yeah. uh, every Evo that Smash has been there, I've been there. Except oh, except for Brawl. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really bagging myself in the corner here. But uh, oh, oh, you know what? I was um, um, I was talking to Phil. Uh, do you feel it's me? You know. Yeah, yeah. And um, Phil and Brandon homemade waffles. Um, I didn't know this. I well, I'd forgotten this. I guess I knew. But um, there was a tournament in SoCal that I drove. It was uh, me. I drove uh, Daryl, the NorCal um, Samus, mm. uh, Phil, Lucian, and uh, Brandon. Uh, we went to a SoCal tournament. I drove them from NorCal to SoCal. It was like a six-hour drive. I spent most of that tournament um, sleeping in the corner. <laughs> I think I, got, I forget how I got eliminated. But like, yeah, and then I slept most of it, and then I drove them back. It was like... <laughs> so... I forget. I mean, I remember doing it, but I've forgotten all about that tournament. Yeah. And then th- just the other day, um, uh, Brandon was talking to me, and he's like, "Hey, man, if it wasn't for you, uh, I wouldn't have been at Wam- or w- there wouldn't have been a Wombo combo, like the really, yeah, the combo. It was it was that tournament. Um, I drove. Yeah, I drove. It's like <laughs> you are you are indirectly the reason that that happened. Yeah, I guess yeah. I don't really take credit for it, but it's like, yeah, I was like, oh, I mean, I, I just did not know. I was probably asleep when it happened. <laughs> like, <laughs> and just, yeah, I had no idea that that was the tournament. That was, uh, I mean, that was a loud moment. How, were yeah. you, how did you fall asleep? Like, how did you stay asleep through that? Oh, because when you, it was a six hour drive. We got there, I don't know when we got there, probably at 10. So that means we left at like 4 a.m. <laughs> a.m. Yeah. And, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It might That's have been a little. It might have been a little louder on commentary than it was in the room, <laughs> comparatively. Yeah. Like I wish, but, I wish this was at a time where like webcams are normalized. I really wanted to see. Oh, like, this is me in the corner. Just yeah, pans, yeah. Pans at the camera. There's just me. <laughs> just, yeah, you would have seen me. That would have been so cool. <laughs> All right. Well. But yeah. That. Um, yeah, I can't. I, I can I probably can't top that. That's. Uh, one of the biggest things, I guess, I've been indirectly a part of. Yeah. Well, other than Evo and all the. Oh, tournaments. sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But that is. That is really cool. And I think that is a great note to end on. Thank you so much for taking your time out to, to have me talk to you. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah. I don't get interviewed that often, so it was fun. Yeah. All right. Well, that's going to do it for the first episode of Telmo's World. This is Telmo. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Justin Telmo. And you can follow Dave. Where can we find you, actually, on socials? Oh, um, it's uh, at SmackDave on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and on Twitch. And um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Don't follow me anywhere else. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully, we'll be back for next episode. I want to say thank you to AFK for hosting us and Guildhouse for hosting some of the best Smash tournaments in NorCal. Uh, it's a great venue. It's yeah. a great venue. And we might be back. We might be there for the next episode. We might be here again, but they're owned by the same people. So. Uh, Yeah, that's going to do it for Telmo's World. I hope you all had a great one. See you all next time. Bye.